Welcome to Baldur's Gate 3 Ultimate 100% Map Guide for Act 1. What are we gonna cover here? Everything that exists in Act 1 on all of its maps, dungeons, mini-maps and main world maps. Basically, same what I did for Divinity Original Sin 2, I'll do the same for Baldur's Gate 3. It took a lot of time, a lot of hours to record this video, so if you find it helpful, don't forget to share, like and subscribe to the channel. It takes one second for you, while well, it took hundreds of hours for me to produce something like this. So take a coffee, relax, and let's go. First things first, Act 1 consists out of a three big maps. The opening map that you can see over here, I believe the name of the map, the entire map is called Eldurin or something like that, so the very first map in Act 1. Then we have the Underdark Part 1, the Underdark Part 2, and the last Rosimorn Monastery map as the final part. So in other words, Act 1 is absolutely huge. Let's cover everything there is from the very beginning. So, after the shipwreck, and this is where the ship wrecked in the island, they call it Eldurin, I think. Your hero, costume or origin character will start from this spot over here. The next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna recruit other origin companions. And Shadowheart would be on this location. And after you collect Shadowheart, you will go with her get your first fight against the brains. Once you win, you will pass right this route over here and pick up Astarion as your next companion. After you are done with Astarion, Shadowheart, Astarion and your main will go down south. You will find a very scary boar here that I wanna spoil what it does and then you're gonna go and uncover a secret chest by the shore. So this is basically the opening part of the game and the order of how you should do stuff. The next thing that you can do is check out the Mind Flayer NPC over here and pick up Gale along the way, your third companion. Of course, you're also gonna activate a roadside cliff. Also, what you can do is triggering a waypoint down here. And this is how we round up the first part of the map. After picking up Gale, your next goal is to pick up Lazel, your next companion. You're gonna set her free over here on the map. After you pick up Lazel, you're gonna go to this spot over here and you're gonna dig with a shovel. You need to find a shovel. There are plenty of shovels along the way, you can pick them up. There's also a lot of materials to collect plants and so on, make sure that you search this area entirely. These are the most important things you need to do at the start. After you're done with a shovel, you're gonna go to your very first dungeon here on the right side. Now what is there to say about this dungeon? This dungeon has four different entrances. The first and the obvious one would be up front. The second one would be when you break the floor with a stone hanging on a rope. The third one would be all the way down to the next door and the fourth dungeon entrance would be northeast on the map all the way up here through the shore also you have one digging spot here and a combat with bandits awaits you the best way to access the combat is after you pick up lazel you go on this route and you start the combat from the high ground over here kill them they're worth it you're gonna get some free luck picks and disarm traps toolkits that you're gonna need for this dungeon so that's why these bandits at the start are worth killing now let's go inside the dungeon so if you use the ancient door to access the dungeon you're gonna appear right in front of sarcophagus okay and there are very good items in this sarcophagus just care about the traps on the left and traps on the right you disarm sarcophagus with a hidden button on a pillar right over here of course, don't forget to loot everything in the room as well. Then you're gonna move forward, loot everything that exists. This is the exit. 
Then once you move forward to the next room, you will have the exit to the upper part of the dungeon. Now it all depends in on what door you accessed this map. You're gonna ignore the door and you're gonna push forward, find the hidden button. In that time, the undead will wake up. You will need to kill the undead and then go back inside and speak with Withers. He's extremely important because he's gonna allow respect in your camp as well as recruiting mercenaries. So don't forget to do this at the start of the game because it's very important. Make sure that you read tomes here and books. They're gonna give you different stuff and you can exit from the ladder up all the way on the east or you can go up. I recommend going up. Now let's go up in the upper part of this dungeon. The next dungeon that we are in right now that's connected to the ruins below us has again a lot of different access points. One of the access points would be here. One of the access points would be over here. One is all the way from the top, if you remember where I said the stone on a rope, it breaks down and then you can jump down. In what order you should do things? You should get out on a ladder in a previous dungeon. You should enter from here, kill a single bandit that awaits you, surprise him, loot everything there is. There is faint painting here from Divinity Original Sin 2. You're gonna unlock the door, you're gonna sneak, you're gonna pull the lever, open it up, and... You're gonna take like one character, a Starion maybe, to go from the top, enter here while others wait, and trigger the fight with bandits. Die explosive battles here, a simple fire spell on a battle, and you already won basically. But this is the best way to access this fight. After that, don't forget to loot the entire area. And this locked door is unlocked by the button here, where you also have a chest awaiting for you and some other rewards in the room. So, once you do everything there is in the ruins, we're gonna make a slow progress toward the middle of the map, or better to say towards Emerald Grove Environs waypoint over here. There will be a goblin ambush. They're gonna try to attack the druids encampment over here and tieflings, and the fight will open up here. The best way and the safe spot to fight this fight is from uphill, right where the pin is. Goblin ambush happens right over here. Once you kill the goblins, you're gonna trigger the waypoint and you're gonna enter the Emerald Grove. This entire segment belongs to the Emerald Grove. Now all you can do first in the Emerald Grove. First, you're gonna go up here, turn left, go down, trigger the dig, Take the loot, you can steal from the NPC over here, you can steal from the NPC over here as well. And then you're gonna go to the right, all the way up on a hill, and you're gonna assassinate a bugbear assassin before he executes an NPC. Okay, if you delay, he kills the NPC, just so you have in mind. After you're done with a bugbear assassin, you're gonna go down and speak with a squirrel. I hope you have some animal speaking potions in your pockets. After you're done with the squirrel, you're gonna continue on the bridge here, and you're gonna go all the way up, and there is the first trader down here, where you can steal or buy items from. Check him out, he sells very nice gear. And the most important thing is your next companion, or better to say, Warlock Will. This is where you can recruit Will on a map. Now, for some easy amount of XP, just loot this bush over here with hay and you get 15 XP per character. Also, you can speak with animals here as well. If you kill a strange axe, he's gonna drop a very rare ring. Over here is where the blacksmith is for your last origin companion, Carl. Later about him. Here, you can loot the chest. Right here is where Hag in disguise awaits you. Your choice, what you want to do with her from the very start. Now, after we're done with this part, we can go to Zevlor's Cave. Here we are at Zevlor's Cave. Now, what do you need to know about Zevlor's Cave? There is the first act's name, as far as I'm aware, and it's called Elturgard. Okay, the map of Elturgard. I said El Elugard, whatever. It's called Elturgard. That's the name of the main world map in Act 1. Here you can look, loot some random stuff, you can collect your quest with Zevlor, and you can go up on a ladder. Now where does the ladder lead you? The ladder leads you here 
on a map. To be more precise, a bit up on a hill above Zevlor's cave, where we entered. What is important to say here, you can climb up, you can loot a chest. Also, you can jump here, then here, then down here, and trigger the next encounter later about it. Those are the two ways that Zevlar Cave works on. Okay, there is one more NPC here that you can talk with. And that will be it with Zevlar's Cave. So, once we're done with Zevlar, then we're gonna go to the north side. We're gonna speak with NPCs over here in this room, collect what we can. And on this side, when you jump and jump again, then jump again, care about traps, you can disarm and you can trigger them from afar. From the rooftop, you can go in a shack where is a cabinet key and it's gonna unlock a cabinet door for more loot. Then you're gonna turn back and enter the goblin ambush map. Let's go to the map. This goblin ambush map, how I like to call it, is actually underground passage map under the grove and it's full with traps and one goblin ambush. How do we stop the traps? When we entered from up there where I told you to enter, now you can disarm a trap with a button here, then you can fight the goblins, care how you position, you can surprise them, you can go behind them and so on, you can also access the fight from this way and then trigger the fight from up here and you can access the fight from this way as well that you're gonna find out later. But once you're done with goblins, you're gonna jump over here and you're gonna jump down there, collect the shard key and disarm next amount of traps, okay? Cause they're gonna scorch you, so you need to be fast. I suggest playing on a turn-based mod while disarming this trap. Basically, all you need to do is press the button. Once you get the shard key, you're gonna go south, you're gonna go uphill here, disarm another trap, okay? Same, on a button. And then you're gonna use a chart key on a chest here and take the loot. Be careful cause it's trapped. It's a trapped loot. After we're done with the underground passage, there are two ways out. One leads to the druid's chamber that's completely locked and you can't do anything about it. And the other one leads outside to the tea house. You can easily go back and continue with the grove. Here we are in the grove again. We dealt with everything there is on this part of the grove and the south part of the grove. Now we're gonna transfer to the east part of the grove. So we take down this route, we find a hidden hatch, ignore, and we go hole down. How do you enter this area? With a shape shifting helmet or with a shape shift spell. You just need to turn yourself into a gnome or a halfling and you will be able to pass. Now let's see what's inside this map. So this map's name is a Tifling Hideout and basically there's nothing here. You can trade some stuff, you can steal some stuff and that's about it. You can't miss a bloody thing basically. On this side though there is a jumping sequence that you can manage and if you do the loot is not worth it. So basically, this is a very bad minimap. There's also a ladder that's gonna lead you all the way up. Let's see where it leads to. And voila, the ladder leads you back to where you already been. You entered from this part, you exit here. It's simple as that. Over here, there will be some NPCs that will give you the quest to free their daughter inside Druid's library. Now let's go down south. Next part is the heart of the Emerald Grove, right over here. What you can do here is speak with all the NPCs inside the circle, speak with a bear, wake him up, speak with the other bear, go down south and speak with a third bear, which is actually Druid Halsin's bear. And once you rescue Druid Halsin, later, later on in the game, don't forget to come back here and tell the bear that Halsin is back, you will receive 15 XP. Also, you can speak with a parrot, you can steal the key, you can get some loot, some plants, some crafting materials and so on. And then we need to enter the library, Druid's library. Let's go. Now this would be the Druid's library. Why are you here? This is the main quest. You're here trying to find a healer to remove a tadpole mind flayer worm in your head out of all of your companions as well. And that healer that you need to speak with is right 
over here. You can also steal and trade with this healer. Of course, this is just a substitute for the Archdruid Halcyon, which is your main quest, because you hope that Halcyon will extract the dead ball out of your brain. Because Halcyon is not here, Kaga is ruling the Druids. Kaga wants very bad things for the grow, so it's on you to discover what she wants. Overall, what happens if you kill Kaga? Kaga gives you 150 XP on a kill, while killing Kaga with Shadow Druids will give you additional 265 XP on top of it all. Killing Shadow Druids without killing Kaga will give you 265 only without the bonus of 150 XP. Overall, killing Kaga doesn't give a thing. It's a very bad loot out of Kaga. If you loot and steal from every single NPC in the game, you can trigger hidden areas before completing quests in Druid's library. Or better to say, you will be able to open a stone slab door you will be able to find the last rune and open the hidden vault right over here. You will be able to open Kaga's chest that's hidden behind the library. Do not forget to loot all the books from the library, to loot all of the useful materials from this part, and to speak with every single NPC there is in the library and collect all quests. Also, those NPCs, tieflings from above, asked you to save their daughter and that's the very first thing you'll do your choice if you want to save their daughter or not she's right over here waiting for her punishment one of the npcs has the keys to kaga's chest and of course to open this up the other npc has a rune to access the vault let's see what's in a vault eh here we are down under in the library's vault library's vault will give you a very good spear and some green gear as well as some crafting materials and random loot. Make sure that you loot everything that exists over here. That's it, that's the minimap, that's the vault. Once we're done with Emerald Grove, center part, north, northwest part, southern part, the only thing that's left is to finish the eastern part of the ancient grove. Let's go. The first thing you wanna do when you enter the eastern part is go up hill over here, and collect a Bard's Helmet, as well as speak with, I think her name was Alvira, and listen to a very good song. After that, you're gonna go back, and you're gonna enter the Harpy's Ambush. Are you gonna deal with Harpy's Ambush? Is your choice. You got options, options, where you can stand, what you can do, from where to trigger the fight, okay? You can trigger from these five points, basically. So, your choice how you want to do it, Harpies will start over here when you talk with a boy. That's about it. I wish you good luck in that fight. After you're done with the Harpies, you're gonna go back, you're gonna jump on this pillar here, then on this pillar here, and you're gonna dig for additional loot on this spot over here. After you're done with digging, you're gonna go south again, you're gonna go where the Harpies were, you're gonna climb up top, loot everything there is around here, then you're gonna go behind, you're gonna go here on the shore, you're gonna collect a chest, get 30 XP as well, you're gonna move, 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 move right here through water, you're gonna reach this point, you're gonna jump over here, then you're gonna go up there, you're gonna jump here, and you're gonna loot the nest of harpies and get a ring. That's how it is with the western part of the ancient or better to say emerald grove now once you collected all quests spoken to all npcs you know that your main quest is to find druid arch druid halcyon and this is the time where we're gonna exit the grove and go to the western part of the map i basically when i start there is that starting area where the ship crashed there is the grove area there is the village area, the hag area, goblins area, fake paladins area, and gityanki area. That's it. What is the way to go? The only way to go is to go to the blighted village. And then you can have three to four different options of how you want to play this game. What route is the best? I'll cover it at the end of the video. Okay, you can go north, you can go south, you can go west. Your choice where you want to go. At the end of the video, I'll say more about it and what's the best way. So, after we're done with Emerald Grow, we gonna we can exit from 
Zevlar scale, we can go back where we came, we can go from a TP, we can also exit from the goblin ambush where the underground passage is in a grow and we're gonna end up here on a map, right over here, close to the main gate. So no matter which way you decide to go, you need to end on this small hill over here. So go right here, through the stairs, meet with the devil, collect the amulet for guidance, find the hidden loot and kill some spiders and loot their crevice over here. Once you're done with all of that part, you're gonna go right over here where you can speak with some NPCs and once they're dead, you're gonna collect a parasite specimen. You need those parasites because parasites basically is elitid power, the worm that's inside your head, which you're gonna unlock special abilities as you move on. Who can drop Parasite Specimens? Enemies, very hard enemies, or better to say absolute true souls enemies, or you can find them along the way in jars. That's about it. So, once we are dealt with a Parasite Specimen over here, we're gonna take this route, pass under the bridge and discover Nautiloid. I think it's a pod or something, whatever, interact with it, then go back and Go this road again under the bridge, go to this route, and you're gonna encounter an Albert's cave. Enter Albert's cave. Let's go. Here we are in the Albert's cave. This is your entrance. You're gonna push forward, loot everything there is, all the dead NPCs and whatnot, speak with the dead and so on. Then you're gonna pass through here and you're gonna encounter a shrine. Behind the shrine is a hidden note. Take a note. Then you go back here in front of the chest and you read a note. The chest will open, you loot the chest, it doesn't matter what's inside, you'll see it once you loot it. Then you're gonna go this route over here and there is an owlbear. If you kill an owlbear, you get XP, you get a spear inside owlbear's head, which you can craft a very good weapon with. I explained how to craft the weapon in one of my videos, just type, type I think it was Spear of the Absolute or something like that. I can't remember very well, but it's on my YouTube channel. How you can access this fight? You can access from the high ground. You can access from here. You can access from here. You can access from here. Your choice where you want to access the fight with the Albe. Or if you even want to fight the Albe. All in all, it's a very easy fight. So, once we're done with the Albe cave, we are entering the village part of the map. Everything that you see here inside, okay, around the river here, is village part of the map. The central part of, I think it was Eltrudin, Elturad, Elturad, whatever. The center part of the main Act 1 map. So let's stick with the Albert Cave. You exit the cave and there is a hidden crevice close by. Loot it. After you're done with a hidden crevice, you're gonna encounter a dog by his dead owner. Use animal speaking potions, speak with the dog, be polite, and you're gonna receive Scratch. As a companion, Scratch is very useful because he can detect hidden items, or better to say dig spots. He is also quite useful in combat, and if he crits, he deals 10 flat damage. I should not remind you that the entire part is full with plants to pick, so you will need to go everywhere and loot everything that exists out of those materials. Now, for this part, once we're done with a dog, with a crevice, with the Albert cave, there's gonna be a side entrance and a main gate entrance. I recommend going on the side. From the side entrance, you got two ways to go. The right way would be north immediately, and the way that's everyone gonna access is clearing the Blighted Village. So let's clear the Blighted Village. As I said, at the end of the video, I'll give you the best way to finish Act 1. So, side entrance. You're gonna assassinate a sleeping enemy over here, and we're gonna start seeing a lot of different things. The first thing that I can recommend doing is a mini boss if you have spells. All you need to do is open the door here, position on the hill and use high ground to kill the boss. You can also find dagger plus one on the spot. Once we're done with the mini boss and we looted the dagger, we can go a bit down south where you assassinated an enemy and trigger the mill or better to say fight with a goblin boss named Bezerk. 
there are multiple ways to access the fight through conversation through scaring them to open fight to cheese to uh different positions okay where you want to stand okay uh, like feather fight can be accessed from a lot of different ways what's the best way the best way is from this wall then you sneak behind you enter the mill you use a switch you stop the mill to save a very important npc then you're gonna climb up and break the ladder and you're gonna trigger the fight with feather from the high ground that's definitely the best and the easiest way to deal with them loot them all speak with the npc and move on along the way once you loot all of this area here you will encounter a musky that will unlock a chest that you can loot and there is a cave down the well okay later about it don't forget to trigger the waypoint as well there is a combat waiting for you here with goblins if you decide to fight i believe there's four goblins in total over here at the entrance main entry inside this house there is an old door that you can access a different map you can also access the same map by putting fire on a web do not forget to loot everything that's inside the house and the best way to trigger the fight with these four goblins is from the roof you can climb the roof and trigger the fight from up there you can push them it's easy kill so we covered the north part of the village now we're gonna cover the south part of the village from the well you can go west all the way up here and you can dig for additional loot so once you finish with a dig spot you're gonna go back and from the waypoint you're gonna enter the next house you can find some good potions here there is a cellar entrance and there is a fight with goblins another group of goblins for the easy xp and another group of goblins here for more easy xp on the left side you will find some very huge enemies you can decide whether you want to fight them or negotiate to use them later on i recommend negotiation here because later on they're really gonna be useful and you're gonna kill them along with the enemies they're gonna deal with later about it behind their house is another dig spot right the spot do not forget to go down south and loot additional things right here on this mini hill also there's a lot of materials flowers and hidden hunter caches along the way usually up here okay along the lines go everywhere and loot it all over here you need to manually dig okay for the treasure it won't show it's a hidden goblin stash dig and you'll find more useful gear so now we're done with blighted village it's time to see what's under the village new mini maps we're gonna start from the cellar entry south of the blighted village port right over here here we are in the cellar or what i like to call this map necrolab the map will start right from here you're gonna loot everything there is you're gonna discover a hidden passage use it go up this route over here and you're gonna trigger a fight with the undead what's important to say about this fight if you kill the first two immediately in round one they won't summon the rest from these coffins okay there's six seven coffins they go and summon them okay they need to reach the coffin and more spawn the more of them spawn the harder the fight but you receive more xp so do not forget that letting them play in the first round or two will give you bigger amount of experience which is very important yes the fight is harder but it's worth doing it did not kill them immediately when they spawn over here you're gonna also dig then you're gonna go down south speak with the door intimidate it because it's the best and the easiest way it's gonna open up the necro lab in the necro lab you're gonna find a lot of useful stuff just search everything around and once you find the key that's in this area you're gonna open the rusty door and you're gonna collect a strange book or better to say book of thai that's also on my youtube channel and you can check out what it does it's connected to a starian's quest line after you're done with the book and the traps and whatnot you're gonna go over here you're gonna pull the lever you're gonna get out back to the blight village next map we're about to enter is here where the old door is one entrance is 
putting fire on a web, the other entrance is from the door, and the third entrance is from the well. I recommend the well. Let's go to the spider cave. Here we are at the spider's cave. If you entered through the well, you're gonna go from here. If you enter through the door, you're gonna go through here, way in and out. If you entered from the spider's web, you're gonna drop from here. That's the entire difference. No matter what option you take, you're gonna end up in this part of the map. Now, what's important to say about this map? Once you're in, you're gonna loot everything there is, and this is where the furnace is for one of the quests. This quest is to forge a weapon with a Susur tree. Susur tree is in the Underdark, so once you get the part you need, you can craft a weapon. You need a dagger, a sickle, or a great sword. You just push it in a forge, and a weapon will drop. That's how it works. So basically, at the start of the game, you can't do anything with this part. It's for later. You need to backtrack. Do not forget to go up here and loot the chest as well. Now, there are two crumbling walls. One on the north and one on the west. Pick where you want to go. If you step on a spider web, you trigger enemies and they come for you. You cannot surprise them. So this is why I said that the best way is to enter from the well. Because you go under the web and you're gonna surprise enemies on your terms and make an ambush for those enemies. Once you're dealt with them, you're gonna collect a ring, gold, surge this entire area, loot everything there is, go down south and collect spiderweb boots. What are the spiderweb boots? Well, basically you can't get them webbed, simple as that. Loot everything there is in this area, including the chest over here. And now comes the big boss fight, the spider matriarch how can you open this fight you can open this fight from a lot of different ways as long as you sneak you can open from down you can open from the high ground you can open from here you can open from here you can open it from here it depends out of the player how i opened the fight i opened the fight from here and it was mega easy because spider queen spider matriarch it took like one million years for her to come she summoned all of those mini spider eggs the white dots on the map are the eggs that she can summon which means more xp if you let her summon all you get more xp and when you start the fight from this point you can easily clear the entire map till they arrive you have the high ground and you spam simple as that your choice how you want to open this fight once you kill the spider matriarch you're gonna go down and you're gonna discover Dark Amethyst on this spot. Dark Amethyst is used for the book that we found in the Necrolab, book that Astarion needs. Now you can put an Amethyst in a book and you're gonna unlock the book of the Necromancy. Basically, it's a key to unlock Book of Tai. And once you're done with the Spider Matriarch, don't forget to trigger the waypoint of the Whispering Depths. Or better to say, of the Spider Cave. Off we go back to Blighted Village. So as I said, Blighted Village is the central part. Now you can go south, the Hag, you can go left to the Goblins, or you can go up here for the new companion and the last origin character, Carla, or go for Git Yankees and finish Lazel's questline. What's the best way? The best way by far is to go north, straight here on the bridge. Under the bridge there are dead druids to loot. There is a way down from over here and there is a hidden rock that you can discover here for additional loot. Search this area thoroughly, go up this route over here, and there is great loot waiting for you at this spot, right over here, east from the bridge. You want to ignore the upper part, because this is where the gnolls are, another fight, you don't want it now, you want to go under them, okay, they're over here, you pass here, okay, so when you go on a bridge, you don't go right, you go left, and you get down. And then you go under the bridge, and then you go all the way to the right, loot everything that I said, and get a tall seller key at this spot over here. Now, there are two ways to deal with Carla. First way is to enter the fake paladin's house, speak with them, they give you a quest for Carla, and then you go for Carla that's over here on the map. And the second way is to go for Carla and then go to the fake paladin's map. 
your choice how you want to do it. I show you where Carla is and where the fake paladins are. Now what is important to say about this area where the fake paladins are. You got a waypoint here at the Reason Road. You got a dig spot all the way up north over here. And you got a cellar under the house. And you got a cellar puzzle map as well. And you have a whole passage with reduced person to pass over here. Pick how you want to do it. All in all, what you need to know, of course, you're going to side with Carla because you want companion. You need to kill these fake paladins. They're going to leave amazing loot for you. Don't forget to steal from them before you trigger the quest with Carla. That's also very important. Now, if you wonder what's in a burrow hole over here, I can show you immediately. All you need to do is transform into a part and you enter. Voila, it leads to the cellar. There is no need, okay, because you can enter the cellar from the upper spot over here. So basically this is pointless. Now speaking about cellar, let's go down. Fake Paladin's cellar. What's inside? Inside are a lot of traps and a lot of loot. All of these red dots are traps. They are chairs. Once you put two characters to sit on a chair, a door opens and you loot everything that's inside over here. I don't want to spoil, just loot everything that you can loot in this area. Solve the puzzle easily and off we go to the next area. The next area we're about to cover is not the closest area over here and where all of these uh, gnolls are. You're gonna come back from the Reason Road, under the bridge, all the way down south. Again, pass from the line I gave you, all the way up here, then the bridge. You don't trigger the fight, you go left. Left to the Burning Mansion. You're gonna enter over here, you're gonna do the quest with the Burning Mansion, it doesn't matter what it is do it. Once you're done, you save NPCs from the houses and so on. Speak with everyone, loot everything in this area, okay? There is a secret hole here as well. There is a Rocky Crevice secret on this part as well. And once you're done with all of it, I recommend having Will in your party as well. Once you're done, you're gonna pass under over here and you're gonna enter a door. You speak with the NPC, he opens up a basement. Now let's see what's inside the basement. The name of the area, by the way, is Valkin's Rest. So, the name of the area under the Burning Mansion is called Zentarim Hideout. And this is how it looks like. So in Zentarim's Hideout, you're gonna speak with the NPC over here. It opens the door for you. It's basically Smuggler's Base with a lot of wood gear. You're gonna speak with the trader. You're gonna set Da Vinci free with this trader over here. You can steal as well. There's great items. Loot everything. Steal from this area. And then you're gonna speak with the main leader of the smugglers. Where she gives you a quest to do something that we're gonna pass very, very soon. Once you collect the quest, once you do it, you receive some XP and a crossbow as a reward, which is more worth it than to do the quest and kill the thing that she asks you to deliver to her. <laughs> of course, this is your choice how you want to do it, I'm just saying you what's better. Did not forget to explore everything around here, to enter the secret rooms, to collect the infernal iron for Carla, because she needs it for her storyline, and to collect purple gloves in this area, as well as... There are buttons here to unlock some of the stuff, there is a hole in a stone to pass and there is a hidden passage which unlocks the way to the Underdark later about it. The most important thing in this area is to loot the north part and to collect the quest. Now let's go and resolve the quest. To resolve the quest from the Zentarim hideout you need the north part of the Risen Road. This part over here. So how are we gonna do it? We're gonna TP right over here to the Reason Road Waypoint. You're gonna go down south. Again, you're gonna pass through here, go up there, and you're gonna trigger the fight with Yinogus and Gnolls from this spot. They're gonna come as a backup from the north and from here. You can cast Grease, Ice, whatever the hell you like after you win the fight, loot all, get the quest chest over here, and go north. Now, north, the best way to open the fight with a Gnoll boss is from this area over here. So, from the backup Gnolls, 
this route, okay, you're gonna get stopped. You go down here, you pass through here, you go here, where there is a road, waypoint is. You pass here and you get up. This is the way to not get detected by the gnolls, okay. You trigger the fight from here, kill the gnolls, collect the Mind Flayer Parasite, and those NPCs from the Zentarim hideout, the quest will spawn here. If you decide to help them, you get a crossbow and 60 experience when you go back to Zentarim hideout. You'll need to long rest though. If you decide to keep the chest for yourself, the quest chest, then you just receive 150 XP if you decide to summon a Spectator Beholder. Now what is the trick with Spectator Beholder? It's a very aggressive and strong unit. There is a way with Spectator Beholder without finishing the quest and without killing Spectator Beholder. You can keep him in your inventory and unleash him on enemies when there's like 20 or 30 of them. For example, you can do it for fun in a goblin camp. Those that I said, okay, that you can recruit or fight over here. I think it was ogres. So those ogres that you can recruit from here and the beholder, you can unleash them at the goblin camp at the same time. It's gonna be a mess. Everyone is gonna fight everyone. Spectator against Ogres, Ogres against Gnolls, Gnolls against Spectator. It, it, you can make probably the funniest fight ever. So, you can also decide to keep a Spectator Beholder. Now your choice. You need a crossbow, finish the quest. You want experience, kill him. You want fun, keep him and unleash on some huge battlefield. Now, do not forget to steal items from the NPC here. His name is Rugan. Up on the north, uphill, all the way up, is Barbarian Gloves, but you're gonna need to disarm a trap first. You can also jump across here and pick up a loot in a chest. That would be the north part of the Risen Road and the Burning Mansion, as well as Zentarim Hideout, Smuggler's Hideout. So the entire north is resolved now. There is one small thing left on the north, it's Githyanki and Lazel's quest. I would not recommend accessing this part of the map, okay? Upper northwest corner of the map, of the world map, without level 5. You need level 5 for this fight, especially if you decide to play on a tactician. This is definitely the hardest fight in the game. What is actually good, if you don't like to fight, you can negotiate, so you don't need to fight this fight, but you get more XP in combat than in negotiation. I don't even wish to mention that you get better gear when you kill Git Yankees than when you negotiate. It is the hardest fight in the game in the Act 1 by far. Out of all fights in Act 1, this is the hardest one. If you decide to negotiate, you will receive a hundred experience less and you're gonna miss all of that great loot. Now, once you're level 5, you need to come here with Lazel, because it's her quest after all, and you can trigger this fight from uphill over here, you can trigger it from the bridge, you can trigger it from the passage, you can trigger it from down here, or you can trigger it the fight behind them. Your choice how you want to do it. I recommend dividing all units and putting only one unit down there with Invisibility Potion. Once the fight starts, you extract your units with invisibility and keep spamming with ranged units that are on the high ground. That's the way to resolve this fight. Here is the broken bridge. There is absolutely nothing over there. And this is where the monastery map, or better to say next map, is. We don't want to do that. Now we want to transfer either to the Hegg's ground, to the swamps, or to the goblin camp. Your choice, what you want to do. You could also do Goblin Camp, then the North part, then the South part. Or you can do the South part, then the uh, West part, and then the North part of the map. It's really your choice. I believe the best way is North because you collect Carla as the last companion. Okay, so you have her available for the Goblin Camp and for the Swamp if you decide to go that way. I say we go down South and we go to the Swamp. There are two ways to access the swamp. The first way is obvious, from the Blighted Village, straight down south, and you are in a swamp. The second way is from this bridge over here, you go down, 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 you pass through the tunnel and all of the traps, you step on a log, and the log will collapse, and off you go, you're closer to the hut. Okay, 
This is further away from the hut, this is closer. What's the difference? This way, with a, with a log, you ignore the fight with red caps. If you access this way, there is a fight with red caps. Now, what I recommend, I recommend fighting red caps, because it's extra XP, and it's the only fight in a swamp, by the way. The only classic fight. Now, as far as the swamp goes, there is hidden loot at this dot over here, and there is a frog that I don't want to spoil for you right now. Of course, don't forget it trigger the waypoint, and do not forget on this dig spot at the corner. That's all there is from the middle part of the bug, of the swamp. Now we go to the south part, or better to say this is Druid's quest, Kaga's quest. This is where you can find evidence for Kaga. What's the deal? Cross the bridge, you go up here, you jump over here, you trigger the fight with uh, explosive mud methods. A very nice fight, by the way. Yeah, exploding mud methods. There are some chests. Once you're done, there is Kaga evidence in the tree. And you can find some good man gloves. Once you got Kaga evidence, you can return back to the Emerald Grove, go inside the library and deal with Kaga. Your choice how you want to do it. Why you do it with the evidence? Because you get more XP than just fighting her on your own. So once we're done with Kaga and Kaga's evidence and with the middle part of the bug, we go to the waypoint of the Riverside Stick House. Very close to the portal is Fake Geralt, or better to say this is a Starion's quest line. Do this how you want to do it, and on a hill you get a good crossbow. That's about it. Your choice how you want to do it. Again, you can also ignore this if you want to. Pick what you want to do. Your main objective here is to reach the tea house, or better to say the hag's house. There is a well here. Do not drink water from the well. On this side, you'll need to use a wand to set someone free. So the best way to access the hut is from the portal. This side, you go up here, you sneak, you loot everything there is in the house, you get a key, you unlock the door, and so on, then you speak with a hag. Okay. That's the best way. She'll offer to negotiate as well as you can become aggressive. And if you do, off she goes to her cave. Now let's go to her cave to kill the hag. Here we are at the hag's cave. Explore the area, loot everything. There's a lot of trapped NPCs over here that you can set free only and only if you kill a hag. If you try to do it before that, you can't. You need to kill a hag. So, there is an invisible door, you pass through it, you avoid 1 million traps, you collect masks, there is a mask fight over here, do not equip masks, in order to successfully use masks, you need to kill a hag. Also, there is another way, if you can sneak, alright, you don't need to kill them, you can set them free, so your choice how you want to do it. Anyways, this is the way you need to go, you're gonna jump. And the best way to ignore 1 million traps is with a Featherfall spell. So you just jump down and go straight for the hag. How you can do it? You can access by sneaking. Going up this way, looting everything the hag has, activating a portal, getting a yellow staff, getting all of those potions, coming back, okay, placing your sail self on the high ground, and then trigger the hag fight. Or you can just trigger the hag fight immediately from this way down here. Hag is over here, at this part. This is where the hag is. There is Meirina, an NPC you came to save here. The only way to save her is with a button over here, or once the hag uses fire on her cage, you can cool it off with a simple ice blast if you have a wizard. Anyways, once you deal with a hag, she'll offer to negotiate and gives you an ability point if you set her free. Your choice if you want to set her free or kill her. I recommend killing, of course. If you have an evil run, take an ability point. So now when the hag is dead, you can equip the mask. And with the mask, you're gonna open a hidden passage in this part of the map. Okay, in the middle. You'll need to jump, mask on, door unlocks and you go to the Underdark. That's the second entry to the Underdark from the Hag's tea house, or better say from the Hag's cave. Also, once you kill the Hag, 
All of those masked NPCs will be free. You can unpetrify NPCs. You can speak with those that were cursed from the hag and whatnot. Don't forget to backtrack the entire map now with a mask on. And of course, Marina's quest. You need to finish Marina's quest with her husband. I show you where his grave is. Your choice how you want to do it. Anyways, backtrack the map once the hag is dead. Do not enter under dark yet. We got Goblin's camp. The last and final area in Act 1. So, the final area would be this. How you access from a blighted village, you take this route all the way down. You can dig here, cross the bridge, and open a fight with goblins here or not. It's your choice. If you don't want to open the fight with goblins, you can go down south, deal with the traps, jump from here, pass behind them, there are three drunk goblins, I don't want to spoil, do what you do over here, and this leads to the monastery map. You can also dig in this part before you leave for the monastery. Of course, we don't go for the monastery, just discover, go back, deal with these goblins, God damn it, kill them, they bring XP. And don't forget, there is a third way in, of course, from the bridge up here, you go behind them and you trigger the fight. So basically, you can trigger the fight with goblins from here, from here, from here, from the high ground, or from here. Pick where you want to trigger this fight. After you're done with the south part of the goblins camp, you go to the bridge and you enter the big goblins camp. They're not aggressive, they recognize you as a true soul. There is a quest with an owlbear, cub, where you need to put him here. How you put him? Very simple. Persuasion is needed. He needs to end up in this part and you get a reward. That's about it. Up here is a big spot. There are plenty of NPCs in this area as well. There is Volo that you need to set free. Very funny conversation. And there is a great trader. Steal everything from him. It's worth it. And again, trigger the waypoint. Over here, use Intimidate on this part, because everyone will be satisfied with it. Go down south, push this clown off the cliff, go way down, pass under the bridge, disarm the trap, and get the chest. Go back, then you go up here, you pass under the bridge again, you stick with the right, okay? You side jump on the right side to avoid traps that are all the way up here, so these are all traps placed like this for you to step in you don't need to disarm them and waste disarm toolkits just go and jump on the side cliff get the chest get back the same way go up disarm and lock tools are waiting for you here cross the bridge loot bark skin potion get back dig spot trigger the fight with sleeping idiots sleeping sleeping goblins here Trigger the fire barrel here, kill the others, there's a fire barrel, and there is a magic missile war, but say force wall. You can break this wall with specific amount of damage. Magic missiles work, Eldritch Blast from Warlock works, or a pure two-handed blunt weapon. Great hammers. That's how you can break the wall. Also, there is way up, if you got TP, or if you go... Up here from the mountain pass and jump, there is a dig spot as well. There is a educated goblin here that you can steal from. You get some XP out of the convo and you get some scrolls. Do it. Once we're done with the goblin camp, you remember that I said you can keep the spectator beholder and you can keep the backup and so on. Well, you can summon them all here and have a war. But I would recommend doing it as the last thing first clear out the goblin camp inside let's go in the dungeon the final dungeon of act one so here we are at goblins dungeon what is your objective here to free druid halstian and to kill or deal with three warlords through souls extract those parasites out of them okay this things for the upgrade your choice how you want to do it Anyways, how it starts. We start from over here when we enter, and killing the goblins in this area gives around 130 experience. There is a burrow hole here that leads you right over here, if you want to pass that way. So what you get is the high ground for the fight over here, if you decide to trigger the fight. 
most of the people will just go straight forward, which is the best way, and you're gonna speak with the first warlord, or better to say, priestess gut. There are plenty of options with Priestess Gut. One of the best options is to lure Priestess Gut to her chambers and you trigger the fight from here. How you do it? You sneak with your companions here. When she says she wants to be alone, you just put all of your companions up here. You speak with your main, trigger the fight. Backup will come from this part. Okay, they're gonna go through here. You got a full round to kill the Goblin Priestess. They're gonna come to the door, you're gonna whack all goblins, kill everything here. Now, before you decide to kill the priestess, make sure that you steal from a trader. Steal all items from the trader, or trade, I don't care. And then trigger the, the fight, because these traders, they'll side with goblins. Okay, and you're gonna lose some good loot if you decide to fight and then loot. So first, steal, trade, then kill. So, once we're dealt with all of this part over here with a priestess, you can unlock the door here with a key, and you can enter, loot everything there is in this room, and there is a new area, but it's better to access that area from this door than from this. Okay, so, pick this one, but not yet. What we need to do now is clear the right part of the goblin hideout, or better to say of this dungeon. Once we enter here, we're gonna go straight up and free Vola. Vola will wait us in a camp. Vola the idiot. So, set Vola free. Do not forget to loot the chest here. After Vola, you're gonna speak and have a conversation with this guy here in the middle. What he's gonna give, actually, if you succeed, is Leviathan's love. How you succeed by not succeeding? You need to fail in your checks. Complete opposite than what you do for the entire game. In order to get this permanent buff, you need to fail. That's about it. So once you get Leviathan's love, or better to say Leviathan's buff passive, you're gonna go down here and set this NPC free and kill two goblins. And by that, the first part, the south part, is done. Now we go to the north part of the dungeon. So, your choice how you wanna do it. There is Ragzin or was it Ragslin, fight with a warlord here, and there is another warlord with their dead poles, the ones you need for your upgrades. And here, on the door, is where Halsin is. Archdruid Halsin, your main objective. How can you do it, and what is the easiest and the best way? The easiest and the best way is to go down and use animal speak potion, speak with animal's potion, and talk with spiders. Spiders will side with you and they're gonna start killing goblins left and right. So first what you're gonna do is go here left and clear all the goblins and loot for the easy XP. If you clear the left side of this map, okay, they won't be able to assist Ragzen. If you trigger the fight with this warlord here, they will trigger and your fight is gonna get way much harder than it's supposed to be. So clear left, then clear this. Once the warlord is dead and the spiders assist and these idiots are out, there is a chest on the upper floor, there is another chest on the upper floor and there is some great, great loot here as well as Carla's iron for her personal upgrades. Now speaking about Carla's iron, in the grove, at the beginning of the video, I showed you where the blacksmith is. All you need to do is go to the blacksmith in the Emerald Grove and give him the iron to upgrade Carl. That's about it. So now that we're done with this part, we can go and kill the third warlord. Do not forget to kill the eye as well. Loot everything there is in this area. Clear the goblins over here as well. And go save Halcyon. Let's go for Halcyon now. This is the map where Halcyon is. When you enter, there's goblins here, there's goblins here, there's goblins here, and there's goblins here. From all sides, basically. And Halcyon is in a cage. When the fight starts, Halcyon breaks out of the cage and you fight together to kill the goblins. Once you kill them, loot the entire map. There's a lot of solid loot. So, after you win the fight, Halcyon will go back to the Emerald Grove. 
don't forget to go back and backtrack in Emerald Grove and see what's gonna happen over there, as well as recruiting Halcyon in your camp. He's very important for the F2. Now back to the main dungeon. Once we cleared everything in this dungeon and once we set Halcyon free and we got all of those tadpoles from, from Warlords and we killed the Priestess and we set Volo free and we got a permanent buff, we go here, this door, right here on the map. Let's see what it is. Here we are at the final map of Act 1, the underground passage that leads the third and the final Underdark. Okay, underdark entrance. There's three entrances in total. What is very important to say about the underdark entrances? You need to enter them on each different spot. From the hideout, Zentarim hideout, from the witch's hut, and here, from the underground passage under the goblin dungeon. Why? Because you receive experience, okay? If they patch it, then you won't receive it anymore. But right now, entering the underdark, from three different locations will give you additional amount of experience points, which is great. So, the underground passage, you enter from the door here, you kill one huge bitch, and then you're gonna loot all the scrolls and books, and there is a hidden pouch here, there is a door that leads back to the spider's cave, you don't need to go over there, there's absolutely nothing in this part, but there is in this corridor here. Here, you got some hidden loot, you'll need to jump and so on, and here is the puzzle. Basically, how the puzzle works, the circles, once there are four blacks uh, where the sun shines, it opens up the door. And that's the puzzle solution. Or you can also get close here, with perception, they're gonna reveal a hidden lever, you click on a lever, the door opens, and it leads straight to the Underdark. That's the map. Don't forget to loot everything that you can loot, to explore thoroughly, but this is the most important thing that you can do on this minimap. With all of that said and done, we're done with Act 1 first map. Now we go to the Underdark, which is also a part of Act 1. Welcome to the Underdark, huge map, and when I say huge, I mean huge map. This is the first part of the Underdark. As I like to call it, Susur 3 part of the Underdark. Now, if you decide to enter from the Hag's Tea House, from the Hag's Cove, this is where you're gonna be. If you decided to enter from the Goblin's Encampment, the door I just showed you a minute ago, this is where you'll end up. If you decide to go from Zentarim's Hideout, Smuggler's Hideout, with a hidden door, this is where you're gonna end up. For this one, you receive 80 experience. For this one, you'll also receive around 80. And for this one, you receive 110. So that's nearly 300 XP when you enter from each different location. Or the same map. Your choice where you want to enter. Let's start with a Selunit outpost. Or better to say, this is the entry from the Goblin's Camp. Goblin's Dungeon. So on the entry, you're gonna loot everything there is on this map, you're gonna shoot the crystal, and it stops the statue. Why you wanna stop statues? Because statues will kill a minotaur that's banging on the door. There are two damage statues. When you destroy a crystal, they stop shooting, and you kill the minotaur from this spot. Okay, from the high ground, so you can actually receive 75 XP. If statues kill Minotaur, you don't get the XP. So make sure that you shoot a crystal immediately as you enter the map. Now, there is a gate lever here, going all the way up on a ladder, will give you a key and another key. One is to unlock this, then you get a good Paladin helmet up here, then there is a perception hidden door, and then there is another chest and some potions to pick. Don't forget to pick everything there is in this room as well, trigger the waypoint, and that would be the Selenite Outpost. From Selenite Outpost, you can go to the left or you can go forward. Let's say we go to the left because left is more fun. Why? There is a Beholder ambush here with Drows. Drows, first Drows, once you kill a Beholder, which is a quite a hard fight, 
drows that are left behind the beholder when you kill them they will drop icy part number one they will drop a howl once we're done with that you're gonna loot all of those mushrooms there are traps over here so here you will need to jump transfer over here get down and there is another enemy bullet bullet kill bullet it's easy to kill Solid amount of XP as well. You will end up in this area. You're gonna get some good gear and 35 XP on this spot. All you need to do is put fire on web in order to pass. Then again, we go down south and we go down. Down are four different things to do. You can go down to the new map. Once you go up here, out here, right over there, you're gonna jump on the mushrooms. You can jump on mushrooms and you can succumb down to the new map there is a way up and down on these mushrooms and as well so you can reach the portal trigger it and it's gonna trigger another portal so this two will now connect so you can go up and down on a portal okay and this is where the hex tea house is so this is why it's better to trigger it from her cove enter here trigger the portal down and you're immediately there okay because basically these two areas connect. All you need to do is clear this part from the goblin camp. Then you TP to the riverside tea house. You enter from the tea house. Trigger the portal. Get down. Do this mushroom jumps over here. And we go down to Boal's cave. Now let's see the map. Here we are in Bual's cave. Okay, the funniest part in the game so far. What do you need to do? There's a lot of fish here and Bual. Whether you're gonna decide to side with him or fight him, you're gonna receive XP and gear. Your choice how you wanna do it. Down south, you're gonna have a dig option. You're gonna have some message in a bottle here. And you're gonna have a chest all the way down south. All the way up north, you're gonna have another dig spot and you're gonna have a chest all the way up north. I'll zoom out so you can check the map for like three seconds and up we go to the Underdark again, main map. If you decide, by the way, to fight Bual, there's like 20 ways to do it. There's high ground everywhere. Your choice how you wanna do it. Sneak, guns blazing, open up how you want it. Okay, so here we are, back up. We were at the way down to Boal's cave, right over here. Considering how we cleared this part of the map, there is only Arcane Tower left. You don't go to Arcane Tower. You're gonna go back to the Selenite Outpost, because this is all clear now. The Selenite Outpost waypoint, now we go to the main gate, and we go down. You're gonna loot everything there is around here, check every corner everywhere, and there is a very good two-handed sword as well after that there is one specific check that you'll need to pass over here make sure to do it and we continue going up north now this is where the minotaurs are we want to ignore minotaurs so we're gonna go from this route right over here jump and trigger a conversation with mushroom npcs once you triggered the conversation, what are you gonna do? Once you triggered the conversation, you will go to Zentarim's hideout. And you're gonna use the passage that will lead you right over here. Collect the XP, collect everything there is here. There's a chest, everything is trapped by the way. There's great items to pick. Open up all of those chests. Very solid loot area. And from this high ground, you will trigger these Minotaurs, okay, and you will kill them. That's the way to do it. After you're done with Minotaurs, you're gonna scout the entire area, loot what you can, mushrooms mostly, and go to the mushrooms base, or better to say, a friendly base in the Underdark, Myconid Colony. Inside the Myconid Colony, you will trigger a waypoint, you will get 
a quest with antitoxin, it's very easy to resolve. By now you should have plenty of antitoxins for the NPC. That's gonna give you an additional quest after that. And you will trigger a quest with a Mushroom King where he says that he wants you to deal with Dark Duergars in the Underdark Beach. That's the quest from the Mushroom King. Once you accept the quest from the Mushroom King, you're gonna go down here, speak with a trader, you can steal from him and whatnot. Make him to summon a uh, Mind Flayer. Mind Flayer will give you a quest for the Arcane Tower. And once you have a quest for, for the Arcane Tower, that's when you're gonna go to the Arcane Tower. This is why I said ignore the Arcane Tower once we were done with all that there is down south. Okay, we went north, cleared, and now this is all done. What's left is the middle and the left part of the map, as well as Arcane Tower. Again, it's worth stealing, buying, and trading from these two. It's really worth it. Once you reach this area, in the Myconids colony, you receive some easy XP. There's mushrooms to steal and pick and whatnot. And this is where you'll receive a new mushroom companion. Except, he's quite useful on this map. Also, there is a great trader with her own personal quest, with her missing husband, and you can steal or trade here very good items as well. So now, when we get a, a quest for the gnomes, where we get a quest to kill Dark Duergars, when we get a quest to visit Arcane Tower, and when we get a quest with a new mushroom companion, when we get a fifth quest with a missing husband, we can explore the middle and the left part of the map. In what order you should do it? The easiest order would be to go down south. There is a hole down. You can check it out. Go here on this mini bridge. This is where the Susur tree is, by the way. Very important. And you're gonna destroy some explosive shrooms. You're gonna fight the hook hunter. And then you're gonna go down here. Descend. And this is where the husband of this trader is. Once you set him free, I won't tell you how. Once you set him free, loot a great ring up there. This is where you can jump, then jump. Okay, from here to here, here to here. Dump, 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 dump. Loot a ring, get down, dig over here. Go back to the trader, finish the quest. Loot still. Do whatever the hell you like. Go back again here on a bridge. And here is the Susur 3 waypoint. There is an ambush with another draw that's gonna leave the second icy part. You remember that I said that this draws here leave a half. This one leaves second part. Once you kill him and the hook hunters. So once you're done with all of that there is a susur tree this is where you're gonna get a quest to craft a great item with a susur tree part once you get that part you're gonna go back to the surface or better to say you're gonna go to the blighted village from the blighted village you're gonna enter the door right over here and once you're inside here with the furnace you need a white greatsword, or a white dagger, or a white sickle. You put it inside, you trigger the furnace, and bam, you receive a good weapon. You can only pick one. Dagger, greatsword, or a sickle. They need to be white. And you end the quest with forging the weapon. Back to the Susur tree. So, Susur tree has Susur blooms that stop all magic effects. Okay. Susur blooms. Pick them all up. Once you pick them up, it goes out right over here. There is a grave. Dig on that grave. Loot what you can. Scar the area, pick mushrooms, materials, and so on. Finish all of this central part, but do not go to this area. Just finish all of this. Okay. Up here on a hill, there's a broken egg and a chest. Loot. How you get it? Again, jump on mushrooms. Search around a bit. So now that we get Susur Blooms, we go to the Arcane Tower. And that's the quest with the Mind Player. Alright. So, this would be the Arcane Tower. One of the best areas in a game, if you ask me. This is the entry for the Arcane Tower. 
Now what do you do with Susur Blooms? These are the Susur Blooms. They stop magic effects. When you get inside, it says anti-magic field. There are turrets in the Arcane Tower. All you need to do is open your inventory, right click on Susur Bloom and throw it. And you're gonna disable an Arcane Turret. You do that for every Arcane Turret here and you're good to go. Danger is out. Now, clear this entire part. Disable two turrets with Susur Bloom, Arcane Cannons, whatever the hell they are. It doesn't matter. Here, you can loot a chest, and here, you can dig. Once you're done with this part, this is where the entry was again. Once you're done with this part, here comes the Arcane Tower. The Arcane Tower. Main entrance, there's more turrets here. You don't want to go through there. There is also an entry from over here. You want to go down left and jump on mushrooms. Okay, you can jump from here or from here, it doesn't matter. Way around, jump, 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 and end up over here. Once you take more Susur flowers, and once you dig over here, you open up the door and you enter the Arcane Tower. Once inside the Arcane Tower, you loot everything there is around here, and you use Susur flower and trigger the generator. The generator will empower the elevator so you can traverse all five, six floors in the arcane tower. Simple as that. Now, you make sure that you loot every single floor. All you need to do is enter the elevator, ascend or descend. Your choice how you want to do it. The point is to reach the top. Now, there's a lot of ways to resolve arcane tower the best way by far is through the elevator there's also holes and so on but you need to turn it into a fart make sure that you collect everything especially get yankee disc a ring there are some hidden buttons so hug the walls on every floor Just hug every wall like this until you discover on what floor is the hidden button and trigger it don't forget to exit on these balconies, loot the chests and so on. There is an amazing, amazing weird chest that's able to transmute heavy items into light. And whatever you put in that chest will have less weight. So instead of looting that chest, once you discover a weird chest on a balcony, Pick it up in your inventory and use it in your camp. It's extremely good. And probably the most important item in the Underdark. I mean it. So what happens once we reach the top floor all the way up? There is a robot called Bernard. One of the hardest fights in the game. Probably the second hardest fight after Gityankis. Once you kill him, he leaves a key. With that key, you can unlock basement. You're here because you need to enter the basement. Basement, hidden door, it's right over here. And once you enter the basement, you will get the item that the Mind Flayer needs. Once you get the item, go back to the Mind Flayer, give it to him, and the quest is solved. Again, please do not rush with the Arcane Tower. What is the most important thing in the Arcane Tower? Rotate the camera on every floor, search for every balcony, from the bottom to the top. It's a huge area. It looks small, but it's huge area. It has five, six floors. The point, kill Bernard, get the key, get to basement, get to mine flare, once you loot the basement. End of story. That would be the arcane tower. And now, there is one final area left of the Underdark Part 1. The center part, the one that leads to the Underdark part 2 and the Mushroom King's quest. Here you can find a fireball wand. Go ahead and take it. After that, there is a perception check here, an ambush with Dark Duer guards. You trigger it, do the fight, kill them all and so on. Okay, get the XP, discover the hidden stash, loot everything there is around this area. Then you go up. Push it down, get the gold necklace, it's hanging from above, you'll need to shoot it in this part. And dig point one over here, then you go back to the Underdark Beach, and there's a ship, or better to say a boat, waiting for you to go for the Grimforge. Before you go to the Grimforge, because you know that you have a Mushroom Companion, once you're done with this Dark Duergars, he will want to overthrow the Mushroom King 
so he can become a king. Your choice how you want to do it. Make him a king or not. Okay, anyways, once you resolve this quest, you will receive a key to open a door. Once you open, your reward will await an important book, an icy part, three, and a very good helmet, hood. Icy part three, one we get from a draw over here, one we get from a draw over here, and the final one we get over here. Once you combine those three parts, right click on a part, combine, you just type IC, they'll show, right click, combine, anyways, you're gonna get Morning Frost. And now you're done with the Underdark, there's not a single quest left. You healed that Huffling Gnome, you looted everything, you went to Arcane Tower, got the light, got the quest, you spoke with Mind Flayer, you stole from both traders, you killed the Ergars, you cleared everything there is, you decided how you want to be with Mushroom King and so on, and if you kept him alive, he'll give you another quest to kill someone on the next map, the map that you can reach with a boat. If you sided with the other guy, then there's something else. Anyways, everything will lead you to the Grim Forge. Go to the Underdark Beach and enter the boat. Up we go to the Grim Forge, part two of the Underdark. Here we are at the Grim Forge, another huge map, the Underdark, part two. Anyways, how it starts from the ship. You will arrive here. There is a lever with athletic check, or you can jump above. Then there is a chest. There is also two NPCs, two Dark Duer guards are waiting for you. Kill them. Get the XP. The others won't get upset because they won't know. Now, you're gonna go and you're gonna trigger the first waypoint in a Grimforge. From the waypoint, you will go here. This is the boat that leads you back to the previous area, where you came from. Here, on this side, there is a very funny conversation and some amount of XP trigger the convo. And over here would be a chest. Once you're done with the spiders, go back, speak with them. This is the very important quest that someone gave to you from the first part of the Underdark. Kill them, set this idiot free. And open the door for the elevator. This is where Act 2 starts. Of course, we don't want to go there. Now we're going to go down. Going down will trigger another conversation. There is a very good ring here. Make sure to loot and get it through conversation. And behind is a chest that you can loot. Do everything there is in this part. After you're done with all of this, you're going to go down. You're going to pass through here. You're going to spot a hidden passage you're gonna open it and you're gonna loot everything there is there's bombs there's a chest there's a crossbow and so on loot everything in this area get out go over here where the iron key door is open it up lockpick enter loot everything in this area and there's stairs up there is a hidden button that unlocks the door from this side or if you went from the other side, there's another button that unlocks this hidden door. Now, it depends from what side you decide to do it. After you pass here, there is a loose stone. Loot. Move the stone and loot. Simple as that. Drag and drop. After you're done with this part, we're gonna go back to the waypoint. Now, from this waypoint, we take stairs up. Right over here. This part. What is here? Here is where the trader is. You can steal scrolls and so on. Okay, do it. Then go north. North, this is where you can speak with animals and so on. Loot some corpses as well. You get a small amount of XP and armor. Then you go here. You pass through here. You loot a chest. You go down. You all the way down. And you're going to loot another chest. And it's going to be a shield. The chest is trapped. Go back all the way back, all the way back, and up here, okay, from this part, you go north, right over here, and you trigger animals persuasion, they'll get upset, 
they're gonna fight the dwarves for you, and then they're gonna break the hidden wall. So you can go above. Now let's go up. So, once the animals win this fight for you, and once you kill the dwarves, they're gonna open this, you're gonna pass, and you're gonna go all the way up the stairs, all the way up here, till this point. Here we are at the upper part of Grimforge. Again, a huge part. What we got here? We got a Dark Vision buff. We got tons of traps on one side of the Broken Bridge. And another side of a Broken Bridge is also plagued with traps. So that means we're gonna go left, loot everything there is around here. Disable a Gargoyle trap. And now, this is what I like to call a 50 traps bridge. There's a trap on every second. You need to go very slowly. Trigger Perception and Disarm, 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 until you disarm 50 traps on this bridge and until it's completely safe. Once the bridge is safe, you're gonna go down the ladder, load the chest, go up, back on a bridge, go down, load the chest, use the lever, jump on a moving platform, Use the lever again with the highest athletics character. It's gonna move to here. Then you use it again. Then you jump with the highest athletics character and transfer to the other side. Now, once we're on the other side from the platform, this is where a specific conversation will happen. After that, we go north. We go here, loot everything there is in this area north. Then you go back south where you came up from the platform. You go all the way down south, discover everything, loot everything there is. Then you go north again, and then you enter here, this area. So what we got in this area? This area is where you get to fight fiends, okay? First, what you need to do is loot all the skeletons around, uh, get a shield mold as well. It's for later, for the armory, I'll explain what it does. There are shield mold molds everywhere around the map. When you see molds, just collect them. So, after you're done with this part, you open the door, you kill the fiends, you're gonna loot the keys, you're gonna loot the chest, you're gonna loot everything there is, and you go north. Here, you can jump all the way up here. There is a way in to this area, and this is where... An NPC awaits for you that's gonna give you explosives. You're gonna need explosives for something later on. Do it and transfer back to this area here. From this area, you can jump from this part over here, go down, loot a chest, go down again, get a mold, and once you do it, there is nothing else left. We can go down to the Underdark Greenforge Wave. Here we are at the beginning again. Now, we dealt with this part. We dealt with all of this. We dealt with all of that. Now, you remember the stairs that I told you to go back with a loose stone drag and drop. Now you go up. You fight with those oozes. There's gonna be an ambush. Ooze ambush. And a chesty loot. After you're done with that, go back again to the portal. And now we're gonna go stairs up again. But this time, this time, instead of going north, because all of this is clear now, instead of going north, we are going to go here. Go down. And trigger the fight with mimics. Once you're done with mimics, you're gonna discover a perception check here that's gonna show a hidden chest. Once you loot all of that, go back right here, south on the stairs, and enter the main green forge room. This is where near is the the objective. The mushroom king gave you the objective to kill near. Wall is blocked. This is where. This is where slaves are, gnome slaves that you need to set free and so on. It depends where you play with the evil playthrough, good or whatnot. There are multiple ways to resolve this. Anyways, you need those explosives that you got from over here 
to break the wall and set near free. Now, how you gonna deal with near? It's your choice. I killed him. So, once you deal with near, and once the slaves are free and all the Wergar are dead, I guess you're gonna go that way. If not, whatever. Once all of this is done, your way I wanna do it. Loot everything there is around, loot those molds, loot everything that exists, and pass through the poison room. You're gonna spot something here, then go back, all the way back. You see the plank, walk on it, go here, jump. There is a mold again, go down and trigger the Underdark Ancient Forge, a new waypoint. Or better to say, this is the south part of the Grimforge. We dealt with the north part, central part, now is the south part. Now, during this central part and during the fight, there are upper levels, there are chests above, there are chests down as well to open up. There is a devil masks everywhere. Again, you set those gnomes free here. There is an old friend you'll encounter, you'll see whom. You can use speak with a dead on near, just make sure that you disguise yourself first. Near leaves a strange lamp and boots, very good boots. And during those options in conversation, trade is not worth it. Persuade is not worth it. You'll see when it happens. Fighting near and dwarves is worth it because it's the biggest amount of XP. When you kill all, you get 100 XP more than when you negotiate. Okay, so. If you ask yourself what to do, yes, it's best to kill all Dark Duer guards, set the slaves free, and kill Nier. Once you kill Nier, you go back to the Mushroom King in the previous area, so you're gonna use Underdark, 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 Myconid Colony, Waypoint, finish Nier's quest, and then you're gonna use Underdark Ancient Forge that you unlocked, and transfer your entire team on the last waypoint in the Underdark. So here we are at the final part of the Underdark, the Ancient Forge and the Adamantine Forge. What do you need to do here? There is the mold to find, there is a chest over here in this, in this area, there is a animated armor combat, four of them waiting you in an ambush. Then you go down, you're gonna loot Mitra Lore. You need Mitra Lore if you wanna craft anything in the Adamantine Forge. Uh, looting Mithral requires Pierce or Force damage. That's the only way to get Mithral Ore. It's resistant to other type of damage. So there is a dig option as well where Mithral Ore is. Then you're gonna go back. You're gonna discover a key for the chest that you can unlock later on. Then you're gonna go back to the waypoint. From the waypoint, now we go right over here. From here to here, you're gonna jump. Here is a Lava Mephits ambush, deal with them, collect the second and the last Mitra lore, you're gonna need it. And enter the Adamantin Forge. After the big boss fight, you got a full inscription on my YouTube channel, separate video on how to craft items at the Adamantin Forge with Mitra lore and with molds and the location and what items you get. You can get six items in total and you can only pick two. So. I gave everything in my videos, check it out on my channel. Once you're done with Adamantin Forge, there is one last thing, it's to kill uh, Lava Elemental. Loot everything around here, you'll need to jump a lot and avoid Lava of course. And there is a very strange amulet waiting for you for some next acts. That would be it with the Green Forge, Ancient Forge, Adamantine Forge in the Underdark. And that would be it with the Underdark as well. All you need to do now is go back to the Myconid Colony, say to the Gnome that the Gnomes are free, speak with the Mushroom King, have some fun, and we got the final area left. Let's see what it is in Act 1. Here we are at the Act 1 surface again. We're done with the Underdark few ways to go to the final part. The first way is from the Valkin's Rest, here where it says Monastery Map, where the Githyankis were from the bridge, it opens up a new map. Second way is where the Goblin Drunkards were, three goblins over here on the map, and you open up a Monastery Map. No matter which way you take, 
upper or down, it's gonna lead to the same map. Let's go to the monastery map and finish with Act 1 guide. Welcome to the final part of Act 1, monastery, the final map. So, depends where you decided to enter. If you decided to go from the north part where Githyankis are, this is where you'll start. If you decided to go where the drunkards are, this is where you start. Anyways, both places lead to here. And over here is the first waypoint. Trigger the waypoint, get the stash, then instead of going over here, you're gonna go right down the stairs and to the trader. Great trader, she gives a quest as well. Steal and loot everything there is around, then go over here. There is an undead fight, once you're done with them, the best way to fight is from here, by far. Once you're done with them, there is a chest to loot, and that's about it. How do you win this fight? Put ice, put grease, enjoy the show. From this part, you can explore, loot, plants, mushrooms and whatnot, okay? And this is where the Act 2 starts. One starts from the Underdark. You can trigger from the elevator in the Underdark. And this, from the monastery, starts from here, from the mountain pass. You don't go there, of course. Now you need to resolve Lazel's quest, or better to say, you need to find the crash, her people. So, once we're done with the south part of the map, this is where you can find another chest, by the way. There is an elevator that will take you straight over here to the waypoint. But you can also go here, it's full with traps though, here, if you decide to jump over here, there's basically nothing until you reach the first parrot. Here you need animal speak potion, speak with him, he'll give you a quest to kill ancient eagles. And this is where you can also dig. After you're done with the parrot, you're gonna go up, clear everything, loot everything that can be looted and trigger the waypoint for the monastery. Rosimorn Monastery. There is a way up, you can enter monastery from here. You can enter monastery from the main door. From the left, you can enter monastery from the right. Better to say, there are five different ways to enter the monastery. And there is a sixth way. It's a, with a feather fall to go down, or you can take this route and go down, then jump here, and so on. Here is the chest that you can loot. Then you can go down, and you can enter Crash. This is entry 1. There is a second entry as well. I'm gonna go to it very soon. So once you decide to go down, you ignore the Crash entry. You're gonna go here, jump, loot everything there is, go up here, all the way up. And you're gonna loot a ceremonial maze. You need that for the puzzle. Now you're gonna go back, all the way back, and you're gonna stop at the entrance. From the entrance, you're gonna go left, and you're gonna kill kobolds, drunken kobolds, okay, there's a lot of them, it's a very fun fight and a very easy fight, and then you're gonna loot ceremonial dagger. After you're done with all of that, and after you loot everything there is, you're gonna go up here, all the way up, 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 you're gonna jump here, and you are on the second floor now, there is a dig option here, there is dig option again, and there is even a further way up to the rooftop where the eagles are. You're gonna ignore that one, but you're gonna enter in. So, once you're inside, there's a Gremishka ambush waiting for you. You're gonna fight another fight. They are very dangerous if you use spells, if you use melee attacks, they're kinda weak, so do not use spells and you're good to go. Once you kill Gremishkas, Loot everything there is in this room. Find that ceremonial weapons. They're very easy to find, by the way. And go to the right part of the map. On the right part, there is a Guardian of Fate. Once you deal with them, there's gonna be a hidden crumbling wall. There's gonna be a lock door that you can easily unlock with a Starion. And there will be... I believe it was a ceremonial longsword out of him. You collect that one, you're gonna go and you're gonna collect Shadow Shadowheart Helmet here in this part as well. And once you collect all of it, you're gonna go behind, you're gonna dig here, you're gonna go up and you're gonna reach the ceremonial puzzle. 
I have the video on my YouTube channel how to resolve ceremonial puzzle. Check it out. It's gonna open up something. You're gonna take that something, okay? And it's very important for the later on. So once you do ceremonial puzzle and you dig and you go up and you resolve everything there is around this area, there's only the ancient eagles left. What is the best way to access ancient eagles? From this spot over here on a rooftop. Go up. Resolve the issue with Ancient Eagles, loot everything there is around rooftop, and that will also lead you to the Shadowheart Helmet. By the way, you'll need to jump. Once you're done with Floor 1, with Floor 2, and with rooftop, you need to find the basement. You access the basement on this stairs here, okay? Right over here. You go down. Now in this part, when you reach the basement, once you loot everything around Leitender statue over here, okay, behind the statue is the entrance for Crash, the second entrance for Lazel's quest. Now it's your choice whether you want to enter from here or you want to enter from here. It leads to the exactly same map. The most important thing here was to resolve the puzzle upstairs and to get that small part that's gonna open up for you for the crash map. That's the most important. Now where do we go? We go to the final map of Act 1. And when I say final, I mean final final map of Act 1. The crash. Git Yankee's crash. Here we are at Git Yankee's crash, the final map of Act 1. Pull to the brim with Git Yankee's. If you decided to use a basement door uh, behind the late ender statue, this is where you're gonna start. If you decided to use the door all the way down south on the map that I showed, you're gonna start from over here. So basically, it's the same entry point, okay? Let's go south. Now, let's say you decided to use another way. If you have Lazel, get Yankees, one at it. And you can explore freely. I recommend having Lazel in your team. Here, you can find a chest. Here, there is a very good item to steal from an NPC, but you need to do it with invisibility potion. On a kill, they drop a good crossbow later on. Here is a good, good trader to steal from extremely good items. And behind the trader is also a chest. Here, there is also a chest. Here is a key for all the cells to unlock. Once you unlock the cell, you can use Speak with the Dead and discover something more about this game. Here, if you decide to kill the guards, you're gonna get a good ring. So, we're done with the south part. Now we go to the center. From the center part, one leads to the hatchery. One leads to the infirmary. Infirmary is where you think that you're gonna get rid of a tadpole in your brain. Hatchery is the quest from the trader from the monastery, okay, where she wants an egg of Gityanki. And there is captain's quarters as well as classroom. So let me say something about the classroom first. Classroom is completely pointless. You can discover some about uh, Gityanki's friends, okay, but it's conversation mostly. There is a good item to steal from one NPC here, from the guard, and that's about it. The rest is only conversation. Now we go down, we activate the waypoint, and we go left. First, we can go for the eggs. Freeing the goblin, dead goblin here is not worth it. The hatchery, the NPC here, will give you boots against acid, so you can walk if you persuade him, and you can grab the egg. Okay. There is also a way to fight them and grab the egg. I recommend persuasion. Once you're done with the hatchery, and once you collect the Yankee egg, you get out and you go to the infirmary. Loot everything there is around the infirmary. Open the chest that the kids are throwing. You can get 40 XP out of it. Speak with everyone. Loot and steal. Do whatever you like over here. There are good items. And enter this room. The most important room. Here you can find one mind parasite. Here you can find two mind parasites to steal. Okay, mind parasites are upgrades. Once you do that, you're gonna receive an option to enter this, whatever the hell they call it. And there is a huge arcana check in conversation. If you succeed, you're gonna receive a permanent awakened buff. Very hard to get. It's also on my YouTube channel and how you should do it. Once you're done with infirmary, you go back. 
Now we're done with hatchery, infirmary, and classroom. From here, we go to the captain's quarters. Three ways. Fight and open the door. Steal the key and open the door. Persuade and open the door. Your choice how you want to do it. The point is to open this door and go here. All the way here. Cross the bridge. Aha. Killing all Git Yankees on the map will yield exactly 2860 XP. That's just a fact. Now, cross the bridge. Speak with their commander. Speak with everyone. Okay, there's a lot of conversation here. Story connected. I don't want to spoil anything. This is where you can steal gloves. This is where you can steal some good stuff. There are chests around here. You can loot all of that. And on the left side, there's also chests and there is a puzzle that leads to late tender, late tender dungeon or better to say once you resolve this you're gonna get the blood of late tender the only legendary item in act one okay so how you can resolve this without spoiling through conversation deception persuasion by being loyal by ignoring them you can also ignore them by combat your choice how you want to do it the point is to resolve the statues puzzle again i got a video on my channel of how to do it it's gonna open the door and you're gonna go to the micro dungeon and blood of late ender how to loot the blood of late ender this is the final 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 map of the act one map guide late ender there's traps everywhere you shoot the crystals, you stop the trap, you pass through here, go over here, go there, shoot the trap, go back, open up, and if you resolve the glass puzzle in the monastery on the second floor, you receive an item, you put it inside here, and you get the mace. If not, then the defensive spawn, turrets, if you destroy turrets, you get a mace. And the third option, you get a mace, Portal opens up, and you got four rounds to escape a nuclear blast. Three options for this map. Told you all. I got tired, but that would be everything there is in Act 1 of Baldur's Gate 3. Now, what is the best way and how you should play? Let's say you just started the game and you don't know what to do and in what order. Very simple. The first thing is you go for all origin companions. Recruit them all. That's the most important. The second thing is you want to find gloves of Tiberi as fast as possible. Okay, I believe they were in the ancient grove and some trader you can steal. This is extremely important. The third thing is you need to find Falara Lube sword as soon as possible. And you need to collect Blood of Late Ender as soon as possible. This will make your run an absolute stamp. How do we do it? Once you start the game and you get grab all companions, you ignore every single fight. You sneak, 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 sneak. And where you want to go first is from this part, right over here. You got one fight only with the brains. You need to do it. Lazel. Astarion, Gale, Shadowheart. Up here, instead of going to Emerald Grow, I mean, you could do it because of the gloves. Once you do that, go up here on the bridge, get to the Blighted Village, sneak, use the sideboard entry, continue sneaking, go left, up here, all the way, resolve the fire mansion, there is no combat, pass through here, enter the basement. From the Zentarim hideout, I showed you how to reach the Underdark. Go to the Underdark immediately. It will lead you. The Underdark will leave you right over here from the Zentarim outpost. There are only two Minotaurs that you cannot kill that early, but you can sneak with Potion of Invisibility. Okay, you go up here, pass through them. You leave the party here, you take one. The, the one with the biggest strength, for example, Lazel or Carla, put Potion of Envy, pass through here, ignore the Minotaurs, pass, 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 reach the sword, take the sword, TP out on a waypoint. 
So you got Falaralu in the first five minutes of the game. A sword with a melody that gives attack bonus to the entire team. The second thing that we want now is... The Blood of Late Ender. Okay, how we do it? We need some scrolls for damage fired like rays are great and we need casters a lot of casters warlock wizard those that can shoot from afar with a bow and so on because of the turrets because now what we want is the fastest way to go and grab the weapon so we're gonna tp back to the blighted village so we go left from the blighted village portal waypoint all the way left 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 you go here jump jump again pass behind these goblins pass through these three drunkards and go to the monastery monastery map now when we enter the monastery map from here we follow this route sneak so we don't trigger the undead go here go up here take the elevator go down go through here go here go down here enter crash we laser this is the entry for crash we go here Lazel will resolve everything with Git Yankees, you don't need to worry. Go up here, go all the way up here. Resolve this with a captain, steal the key from her, okay? Go up, unlock the door, go here, trigger the convo, persuade, go left, resolve the puzzle, enter, grab late tender. When the turret spawn, you can shoot them, and you get two OP weapons in the first 15 minutes of a game. That's the easiest way in Act 1. Now, what's the best way? Let's say you don't want to play with OP weapons from the start. I would never. I just gave an option. What is the best way then to play fair and square? Very simple. We clear the east part. Then we go to the village. Clear the village. Then we clear the north. Then we clear goblins. Then we clear the hag. Then we clear the underdark first part then we clear monastery first part then we go to underdark part two then we go to monastery crash or rather say monastery part two and next is done that should be the best way to do everything anyways it was a long guide i hope you'll find it useful and i'll be seeing you in act two that i'll do exactly the same like this one as always thanks for watching see you back soon